Hi, I'm Jenny Taylor Martin, a director here at Edgar Casey's ARE. Today I'm speaking with the author of Edgar Casey's Everyday Health, Carol Bariff. Carol, it's so nice to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. How did you come to put this book together? Well, it goes back to about 2004, I believe the beginning of 2004. The Heritage Store had been doing a monthly newsletter for some time and I was involved in writing some of the pieces for that newsletter and editing the whole thing before it went out each month and we were carrying a column by a man named Ed Rocks who did a, a health column and we ran out of uh, we ran out of topics for Ed and so we came to a, the next month and uh, I said, well, I, sh I, there's, I can probably find something I can throw in for this. And that just started the, the, the whole process after that for the next um, uh, six, six, seven years. I was coming up with an article once a month for the uh, Heritage Nor Store newsletter and uh, various people started telling me after several years, well, you really have a growing book here. And I kept saying, okay, later, but I need to collect some more, some more. And, uh, and then finally it seemed to gather enough critical mass where I really did have a book. And I think I have about somewhere between 60 and 70 little sections in there. So it grew gradually um, once a month and uh, was really a fairly painless process. What does everyday health mean to you? The small and the large things that uh, I do uh, to keep me, keep me in an optimal state of health and occasionally has, it has to, to do with the things I don't do but um, everyday health I believe is a learning process for every individual and um, not coincidentally as people age, they tend to need to pay more attention to that. And so there's a, a growing consciousness. It's certainly been a growing consciousness for me um, to learn the ev everyday health practices that, um, that work for me. And it's certainly, there are certainly individual aspects of that for various people, but there are many uh, things that are universal. For instance, drink enough water, whatever that uh, ideal amount is. And the Edgar Casey readings have some very specific things to say about that. They really don't vary on that much or get a certain amount of exercise, certain amount of rest, pay attention to what goes into the body, pay attention to the flow on out of the body of waste uh, materials, pay attention to how we nourish ourselves through uh, other activities, sports, games, uh, enough work but enough uh, recreation. What is your background in the health field and in the Casey material? Well, in the health field, um, I have some family background with this that influenced me a great deal. My grandparents were both, um, on my mother's side, were graduates of the uh, Kellogg School in Battle Creek, Michigan. So I grew up um, with, with regular visits to my grandparents and seeing what they did um, for treatments for the for the the people who came in to see them they involved rubs and sweats and uh, uh, hot and cold uh, applications and lights and and things uh, little health maintenance uh, yeah massage was a part of that health maintenance uh, strategies and then uh, as I um, when I moved to Virginia Beach and started working for the Heritage Store in 1970, um, my interest in health, which also came from my mother, more from a nutritional angle, all coalesced in the opportunity to research the Casey 
readings here in Virginia Beach. I believe I had already read Edgar Cayce Speaks through at least once, which is verbatim readings. And through the Heritage Store, I started doing product research, and I started writing about, about the uh, products and put together some very early publications and uh, contributed to some much larger publications in the course of that, like the uh, Edgar Cayce Encyclopedia of Healing, and um, before that, the uh, Home Medicine Guide. And in the process of that, I tried everything. There's, there are very few Cayce remedies that I have not experimented with on myself and uh, had various uh, usually um, very interesting results that I, could, that I could share with other people and in many cases really, um, really, really helpful results. And so I became more and more um, immersed in using the Casey approach in, you know, as part of my own everyday health practice. My medicine cabinet is loaded with Casey remedies. And I understand you're a massage therapist. Yes, I studied Casey Riley. I have been practicing massage for over 20 years. How would you suggest that a person approach your book? Well, depending on a person's mindset, um, it, it certainly is possible to pick up this book and go from start to finish, just, uh, I believe, collagen, the glue that holds us together is the very first section. That's very basic. But I believe what will be helpful to a lot of people is to go through the index and just start with something that is of personal interest. Um, it could be all about glycothymoline or where did the tomidine come from or what the readings have to say about gout or high blood pressure or uh, various aspects of diet, um, what the readings have to say about wine, for instance, or carbonation. So uh, I would say start with, an in start with a topic that's of personal interest. It could be sleep related, it could be exercise related, diet massage, and uh, take it from there. Do you have any favorite chapters? I definitely have some favorites uh, with, for various reasons. I have a chapter, for instance, on the care of the feet where I threw in every foot pun I could think of. I just had so much fun doing that, from petals to soles. Uh, and uh, because part of the thing for me was to keep it interesting, to make it interesting for me. And so the ones that are my favorites now are the ones where I really went into depth and came up with some deductions or, or a way of understanding something or, or presenting something that was new, that was new to me, or sometimes, you know, a turn of phrase or a, or a title that I loved. Um, I have a kind of a tour de force on castor oil. That one's a two-parter. <clears throat> One whole chapter is about abdominal packs and all the ins and the outs uh, of that. And then uh, another one is uh, called Head to Toe, um, where I find all the different parts of the body and types of areas where uh, castor oil was recommended. I think among my favorite are the best kinds of lapis for the human body. Um, what did Edgar Cayce have to say about that? Uh, I presented it as though I was a detective going through the readings uh, and to discover what did Edgar Cayce really mean when he said go to the Smithsonian and find the stone 
that sings and sit there and listen to it sing. So I called that chapter the case of the elusive singing lapis. Um, I, I know that's gone over in the uh, Gems and Stones book, but I did my own take on it. Oh, keys to rejuvenescence. I love the word. I was researching rejuvenation in the readings everything I could find about that. And I went to the dictionary and I, I found the word rejuvenescence, which is the state of being, or I guess having been, rejuvenated. I hadn't seen that before, but it, it, made, a, it made a great title and that was a fun article. Carol, I think your book is such an interesting read and a great resource for any home. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be able to talk about it. And I hope you'll all take a look. Edgar Casey's Everyday Health, Holistic Tips, Remedies, and Solutions is published by ARE Press and available at arecatalog.com.